Deferred compensation is exactly how it sounds. You are deferring compensation to a later point in time. You are taking money from present you and you are deferring it to future you. And that could mean big potential tax savings, some notable benefits, but there are some substantial risks. This is not as straightforward as it seems and it might not make sense for you. And that's why we wanted to put this video together to give you an idea what those risks are, what the benefits are, the considerations, how this works, so you can have an idea if it's right for you. My name is Michael McKelvey and I'm a certified financial planner with Mariner Wealth Advisors. And we wanted to put this video together because we've been getting a lot of questions around non-qualified deferred compensation. If at any point in time you feel like you'd benefit from having a guide or you feel like you're curious how strategies like this fit into your world, how does it all come together in the most efficient way, you can schedule a complimentary consultation with one of our advisors by using the scheduling tool. And always make sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along for more content from industry professionals here at Mariner Wealth Advisors. Let's dive into it. So when people discuss deferred compensation, they typically are referring to non-qualified deferred compensation, not the qualified versions through 401ks, 403bs, or traditional retirement accounts. So I wanna make sure that it's understood that's what we're touching on today, non-qualified deferred compensation. So typically once a year, an employee gets to decide how much money they'd like to defer through their deferred compensation plan. And that might be deferred to one specified date or over several specified future dates. Just depends on the plan. You might have to take that money once you retire all in one lump sum, or you might be able to choose, hey, I'd like to take these deferred compensation payments over several years at some future point in time. Again, it's just going to depend on the plan, but you typically get to make that election once you retire. Often an employee gets to choose a distribution date and when they will receive these monies. It might also be the case that the employee gets to choose how they would like to have that money distributed when they retire. And this is an important distinguishing element in comparison to a qualified deferred compensation plan like a 401k. You can receive the money before 59 and a half without a penalty. So. It's non-qualified, which means it's not governed by the same traditional government rules, it means it's also not protected, which we'll get into a little bit later, but that does mean you get to receive the money potentially later. The company can set a little bit more of a framework here. Similarly to a 401k, the monies can be invested. So typically the company will give you a set of fund options, again, very much similar to a 401k. You can choose how you would like to invest those monies. They might even give you a self-directed option and open up the door for you. But as is the case with many of these details, it depends on the plan. So make sure to check. Let's look at a quick example of a deferred compensation plan because there are some notable details here that maybe make it a little bit more complex than it seems. Let's say that Mary is making $500,000. Good job, Mary. She is a high income earner. And let's say she's doing an even better job of maxing out some of her options. So she's maxing out her 401k. She's maxing out her ESPP, her HSA. And she's curious if there's ways to defer additional compensation, maybe because she just doesn't need it right now. And she heard there might be a tax benefit to do so. So Mary elects to defer $50,000 into her company's deferred compensation plan. And she elects to receive that money 10 years later at the age of 50 when her daughter is going to college. So that money will be paid out 10 years later, assuming that Mary doesn't leave the company. If she does, it might be paid out through installment. Again, it's going to depend on the plan, but this money will likely be paid out 10 years later. So this lowers Mary's taxable income by $50,000. She's deferring money from present Mary to future Mary, which means she pays less taxes in that year. And this sounds good on the surface, but I want to pause there because there are some notable specifics for you to think about here. What happens if you retire early? What happens if you get fired? What happens if you leave and go to another company? What happens from a distribution standpoint once you elect to get the money? Are there different installments that you can choose? Does the company provide matching provisions on your non-qualified deferred compensation plan? It is so crucial that you understand these specifics and you look deep within the confines as we always do when we're working with clients, look deep into the confines of how your plan is structured. So again, wanna make sure that that's clear. This will greatly depend on how your plan is set up. 
So now that we have a basic idea how these non-qualified deferred compensation plans work, let's talk about their benefits, their risk, and their considerations. So the two most obvious benefits to non-qualified deferred comp plans, first, the tax deferral, which potentially means you're saving money on taxes. And second, if the company is matching any of the money that you're putting in there, you could get a better return. Uh, most companies don't, but in case yours does, that's a good thing. So let's go back to our example of Mary here to see how big of a benefit this tax deferral can be for you. So let's say that Mary's 50,000 averaged 6% from an annual return standpoint over the 10 years that it was invested. She would have $90,969 at that point in time. So let's say that Mary is in the 32% federal income tax bracket and she's in the 5% state income tax bracket making a combined rate of 37%. She would pay a little over $33,000 in taxes 10 years later if she took all of that money in one single lump sum. So she didn't do this in installments, she just took it at once. And the plan might require that. That would leave her with a little over $57,000 in the account. And you might look at that and say, okay, she put 50,000 in, she only has 57,000, what, what's the benefit here? Keep in mind, the taxes were never taken out when she contributed this money. That's part of the benefit. So that was a pre-tax amount of 50,000, now we have an after-tax amount of 57,000 that she's left with. Alternatively, let's go back in time and say that Mary did not defer this money. She took it year one. She would have to pay $18,500 in taxes, leaving her with $37,500 in her account. And to keep this apples to apples, let's say that she invested that money and also got a 6% annual return. She would have roughly a little over 57,000 in her account 10 years later, but she would have to pay capital gains taxes on the growth if we kept the same scenario here. We assume she was in the same tax bracket. So she would be left after paying capital gains taxes on the growth with a little over $52,000 in her account, making a difference of roughly about $5,000 just for this first year's contribution. Overall meaning she had about a $5,000 tax savings difference if she decided to put the 50,000 into the deferred compensation plan versus taking it as income in this example. And that's significant. And we're not even assuming that she maybe could be in a lower tax bracket when she retires, or she could move to a state that has lower state taxes or no state income taxes. So it could be even greater, but there are some significant risks to consider. Let's cover that next. So the first risk here, investment performance is not guaranteed. Never really is with any investment, but keep in mind that risk is unavoidable. Not taking risk also constitutes risk. If you got money in cash, well, there's inflation risk that might be there. So another notable risk here, if you're deferring all this compensation, you're also potentially deferring a large lump sum tax bill which could defeat the entire purpose of why you did this in the first place. And unfortunately, a lot of executives and employees we help run into this problem. They get into it to save money on taxes, but they don't read into the specifics and realize, hey, you gotta take all of this money in a lump sum if you leave or when you retire. Really important to understand the specifics on this one. And also, if you're working with a professional, to work with a professional that considers the entirety of your plan and not just one investment account. And perhaps the greatest risk of non-qualified deferred compensation plans, the plan is not guaranteed. So we know the investments aren't guaranteed, we get that, but if the employer goes under, if they file for bankruptcy, you don't have the same protection that you do with other qualified accounts such as a 401k. So that means it's important to consider what company you work for. Is it a new growth-oriented company that maybe doesn't have a strong track record of good cash flow? Or is this a stable company that's been around for a while that's been reliable? Definitely important to take into account because again, you don't have the same protection here. Also, if you file for bankruptcy, which I don't think anybody is ever really planning for, but if you did file for bankruptcy, you don't have the same protection with this, again, as you do with other qualified accounts. Creditors could potentially take money out of your deferred compensation plan. So point being, not the same protection here. So a few quick strategies if a non-qualified deferred comp plan works for you. The first, defer monies if you plan on moving to a lower income tax state. So if you have plans to move to another state and maybe you're eyeballing one with no income taxes, all things else equal, theoretically you would pay less in taxes 
if you deferred compensation to the point where you were living in that state. So that's one strategy. Another strategy, deferring monies to retirement, you might be in a lower income tax bracket. So if, when you look at the plan, they give you installment options and you say, okay, well, if I'm retiring early at 50 or 55, and I'm gonna have this gap period before social security or before I have other incomes, I can then take installments on the deferred compensation plan over that period of time and be in a lower income tax bracket. So that's another strategy to consider. And the third strategy, deferring monies to a large expense. So maybe college or a wedding, someplace you know that you're going to need a fair amount of money, or at least more than your traditional cash flow. So this decision of whether to invest money into a non-qualified deferred compensation plan, it can be a complex one. And if at any point in time you feel like you'd benefit from having a professional guide help you with this decision, considering all of the different other variables in your life, you can feel free to schedule a complimentary consultation with one of our advisors here at Mariner Wealth Advisors by using the scheduling tool. As always, hopefully you found this video helpful and educational. Take care.